hard disks die. But we want our media and projects to live. But creating archives is boring, confusing, and mostly ignored. What I want to do today is showcase the gear you need to create archives, how to archive a collection of files, and how to find and retrieve a file from tape. The process is easier than you may have thought, and it's a whole lot safer than trusting a hard disk not to fail. So with today, I've got a whole bunch of different hardware to show you. We're going to be showing M-Logic's M-Tape, which is an LTO6 drive. Tolis Group's Argus, which is an LTO5 drive, and I requested LTO5. They've got LTO4, 5, and 6, but I want to demo 5 in this presentation. We're also showing a High Point Technologies Rocket Store 6328, which converts Thunderbolt to Minisas. And I'm showing a MacBook Pro 2013, which is running Yosemite 1010 And you can see from the small white box the specific specs for the computer. The computer does not have to be very powerful to drive tape drives. This happens to be my standard laptop that I use for all of our webinars. 16 gig of RAM and a standard i7 processor. Option one is where we start with components from different manufacturers. MLogic's M-Tape LTO6 drive, which you can learn more about at mlogic.com, includes a blank tape, cleaning cartridge, and Thunderbolt cable to connect it to your computer. It has a starting price of $35.99. And then to that, we'll add Imagine Products Pre-Roll Post, which is core archiving software. You can learn more at imagineproducts.com. Pre-Roll Post is $4.99. And if you want to also create small proxy files of your video media during the archiving process itself, then get ProxyMill, which is $299. This means that Option 1's package, LTO 6, which is the current version of LTO, is about $4,100 to about $4,400, depending upon whether you get ProxyMill or not. And ProxyMill is a nice add-on, but not a required add-on. So let me show you how Option 1 works. I'm going to start pre-roll post. Just double-click it here to start it up. And this automatically opens up into the backup screen. To back up something, I've got this folder, which consists of some Final Cut projects, some media files. It's about, let's see how big it is here. Close this. It's about 12 gigabytes in size. Why? Because the process of backing up is really boring. What we want to spend time with is configuring it and pulling our files back, but watching the wheel spin can be really tiresome. So I'm not going to back up a whole lot of data, because once you understand how to back up a little, backing up a lot is exactly the same. Here's how we do it. Grab that which you want to back up and drag it into the window. I could back up a folder, an entire hard disk, a group of folders, a group of files. Just drag it into the window. But before we can back it up, we have to tell it where we want it to go. So click the Settings window. And notice that I've got a setting of this LTO device. Well, what is an LTO device? Let's look here. This is what the M-Tape looks like. It's this beautiful, sleek black box. And this is an LTO tape. It's about four inches high, four inches wide. It's about three quarters of an inch in diameter. And it's solid plastic. We put it in. Let's see, got to remember how that's done. We just put it in by pushing it in the front. And it just gets grabbed and pulled into the interior of the machine. The blinking light indicates that the tape is being threaded up into the drive. Because Pre-Roll Post uses LTFS technology, I have to format the drive before I can record data to it. So again, look at the settings window. See this choice here called Format Tape? We'll click Format Tape. Tapes can be given a six letter or number identifier. Generally, you would number them, say, one, two, three, four, five, etc. Letters have to be all uppercase. It has to be exactly six, not more, not less. We're going to call this tape number 12. Just invent a number out of whole cloth. Click Format and click Format Tape. Let's open up the mic, and you can hear the tape making noise. This is what a typical tape drive sounds like as it's queuing up a tape. Once the tape shows up on the desktop, then you're good to go. By the way, a couple of other things to show you. When you click on the video tab, you want to make sure that determine videotape for each file to be sent to backup is checked. What this does is it generates a thumbnail 
of each of your videos and stores that thumbnail on the tape. If you have ProxyMill, you want to turn this checkbox on and that will automatically create proxy files during the archiving process. Indexes are stored to your home directory, but you can also have a backup copy stored, and this allows you to specify where backups of your indexes are stored. You can have it automatically email you if you want, if you're feeling lonely and want to be contacted by a machine. It'll tell you that the archiving is done. However, I generally do all of my archiving overnight. I set it up before I go home. It's done in the morning, and I never worry about being notified because I'm checking it in the office each day. And we can change the default names of labels and tapes if we want to. But most of the time, I just make sure we have a location set properly and that the video is creating the video type, which means it's generating a thumbnail. Once that's done, we're now ready to backup. And I click Prepare Backup, and the backup window shows up. This allows me to rename the backup. Let's just call this uh, Backup uh, 15. We could call it Fred. It could be the day's date, whatever works best for you. And once that's done, then we say Backup. Notice that it's going to be backing up based upon that folder that we dragged in. We can see it highlighted right there. The Backup Process window is actually showing us two things. One is the inner ring shows us files being copied from the source hard disk to the tape drive. The outer ring is the verification of files. Once they've been copied to tape, we then go back, rewind the tape, and play the file a second time and verify that every bit on the tape exactly matches the original file that's on our hard drive. <laughs> One of the cool things about pre-roll post is it records files based upon the largest file size first, and then records files in descending file size from there, which means it starts off moving really, really, really slowly, and by the end, it's just whipping around. <laughs> Our backup is complete. I'm going to click the Done button, and we're finished. That's all it takes to create a backup. Drag the file or files that you want to backup, give it a location, and start the backup. The cool part of this process is it isn't hard. We find the files that we want to back up, put them in the backup category, back them up. Don't stay around while that process is occurring because it takes too long. When you need to find a file, search for it by some criteria, including file name, and it will automatically be copied from the tape back to your hard drive. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar called Protect Your Stuff, Archiving Hardware and Software. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at LarryJordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 183. If you need to stretch your training dollars, a subscription membership to our video training library saves you money. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 1,200 movies, hundreds of hours of training all in-depth and all up-to-date. Plus, members can attend any of our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it every week. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash subscriptions. And thanks.